ग्रेट थैंक यू सो मच नमस्ते सत श्रीकाल आदाब भारत और ई कॉमर्स दोनों बहुत ही तेज गति से आगे बढ़ रहे हैं ये हम सब के लिए बड़ी खुशी की बात है और गर्व की भी और आने वाले कल में ये गति और भी तेज होने वाली है येस दे हैवीन सम चैलेंजेस स्पेशली इन द पास सिक्स टू एट मंथ्स बट देर आर सम ब्रांड्स हु हैव नॉट जस्ट ओवरकम दीज चैलेंजेस बट थ्रू लॉन्ग टर्म सस्टेनेबल एज वेल एज सम वेरी इनोवेटिव स्ट्रैटेजीज ऑफ लेट आर डिस्ट्रप्टिंग द गेम and today we have some of the champions of the industry to come and share with us what these strategies are you know how they are really not just thinking outside the box but breaking it so that we can limit failures and maximize the chances of success so with that let us start the panel uh before we go to the strategies and what innovations are happening and what the learnings are i think it's important for us to take a step back and understand our audience slightly better what is happening in bharat are there any behavioral patterns that we are seeing are there any things that could help uh, when we make other strategies and i would love to know what nestle is doing and i would love to get mansi in, into this discussion so mansi any behavioral patterns that you have seen for the audience in bharat of late so when you say bharat a lot of time uh, notionally people will start thinking rural uh, versus urban i think uh, now uh, beyond a point there is no uh, it is a diminishing gap from a consumer understanding perspective or behavioral perspective on an e-commerce ultimately what varies is mainly the trust factor i think they are coming more or more and more on online uh however is it translating into shopping mission and online shopping experience yet not as much still online shopping is only 30% of the total people penetrated and uh, that is all coming on how do we unlock the reliability factor as a brand uh how do we talk in person to that consumer specifically from a shopper perspective uh, uh quick patterns that we've seen i think it's driven mainly on convenience combined with balancing of value seeking behavior and that is what really defines bharat so how do you speak to me in my language and offer me value and when i say value it could be price it could be value in terms of your brand or benefit as well i think that's broadly some of the key things that we are seeing driving bharat today when it comes to e-commerce Okay, great. You, uh, Mansi, you mentioned about reliability, and I think that's something that I want to park and possibly come to Devesh in a bit. Uh, but I would love to get Priyanka's perspective. Uh, Priyanka, Mansi mentioned about the diminishing gap. Is that something that you're also seeing, or are they, uh, or you have a different perspective on this? And uh, any behavioral patterns that you've seen for the Bharat audience? Yeah. So I mean, there are two aspects to this. You know, one there is rising income, rising aspiration. and uh, e-commerce is of course leading to democratization of availability right so there's a wider set of product choices that are available to people and let's assume bharat as tier 2 tier 3 yeah. so right suddenly they have access and awareness about a lot of brands and products this is coupled with the fact that there's a lot of social media consumption right right and even local social channels like more chit chat you know influencer access which is of course giving them a lot of exposure so that is opening up their mind and we do see that there is there is a desire and ability to try new products and try you know in our categories more premium or specific benefit based products uh, so for example a whitening toothpaste or a multi benefit toothpaste right which is a higher order benefit having said that we also do see that most of the trials and growth is coming out of smaller packs versus you know larger packs so people are willing to try and uh, and the affordability and of course value proposition is 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 of importance to them right so still i think the larger drivers are still getting the right value proposition uh, the attractiveness of price and offers that still remains is the underlying sort of you know behavior there the other difference that uh, i mean the other perspective on browsing and searching and how are they you know looking for products while if you look at metros where they are more evolved shoppers they tend to search which means they are more sort of intent based and they know what they want to buy whereas if you go you know tier 2 and at your three we see them browsing a lot more that's the uh, and therefore they are trying to discover and and you know browse more products i think in in the overall scheme of things it's it's leading to more digital influence 
but it's the translations into sort of transactions or purchases is still sort of less as to what you know Mansi was saying. Great. So two things: browsing to buy is still a challenge. Uh, it's a sentiment I'm picking, and uh, there is a diminishing gap from a behavioral perspective. Uh, Mansi, you mentioned about reliability. Devesh, I would love your perspective on reliability uh, in general, and also when it comes to the last mile delivery. Uh, because that's an area where if you break a trust once and across audiences, but specifically in Bharat, it's very hard to regain that again. So how is Misho as a new age disruptive brand really uh, innovating over there? Yeah. So logistics and last mile delivery, right? I think that is super challenging, right? especially as you penetrate into tier two cities, towns, villages, right? It gets, it gets really difficult. There's three primary issues here. I think. One is around kind of like addresses. Like how do you actually get to the right customer address? And how do you figure that out when address specification isn't great? Uh, I kind of compare this to the challenge that India had from a mapping perspective back in 2005, 2007, where I think Map My India and Google and others kind of like made a lot of investments and were kind of like able to like bring urban India on the map in a very reliable way. I think we are at that stage where whoever is able to unlock that really well is actually going to like have a very significant advantage going forward. So that's one is address. The, and of course there's a lot we're doing in there in terms of kind of like ensuring at the point of entry of address through the e-commerce flow, right? I think we're able to get as specific as possible. We're able to kind of like get to sanitizing those addresses uh, and helping the user kind of like get sharper there. Uh, we've been experimenting with things like voice notes for the last mile delivery person because often what we see is when they're not able to find what they're going to do, they're going to call the user. Yeah. So can we actually enable that even before that? So that's, that's something that uh, that's something we're trying unique there. The other problem is around attribution when things Things go, don't go well, as you said, right? I think happy path is great. Everyone gets the delivery, the package, they're delighted by what they receive. It's the when that doesn't show up, when issues happen, when that's late, how do you solve for that? When they get the wrong product. And I think this is a lot about attribution, where between the seller, the logistics provider, and the user, right? What went wrong? And I think the solve for that is really instrumentation. I think instrumenting when you have your own logistics network is great. Often most brands here, right, and including Misho as a e-commerce platform, we work with third-party logistics providers. But like, how do you kind of like solve for instrumentation across all of those? That is kind of like what has really helped get better at all of these. And I think the third one is probably some everyone's familiar with RTO, return to origin. You kind of like send a package, but for a multitude of reasons, it doesn't get show up at the door because either. We couldn't find the address, and we come back to the address problem. The user chooses, user isn't at home multiple times, they can't locate the place, or the user chooses to not receive the package, right? And I think that's where, of course, getting sharper on address, getting sharper on the share of prepaid orders, because your commitment is much, much higher when you've actually paid online versus when you've chosen COD as a delivery mechanism. So how can you enable the user to Kind of like make prepaid a much more attractive option is something that helps here as well. Oh, very nice, Devish. I think some very actionable things which can be picked out from that, especially the voice note one. Uh, Unilever is known for doing some very innovative things across the years. Uh, I would love to just your perspective as to what innovative strategies is Unilever driving across Bharat for e-commerce. Sure. So um, I think uh, as the shopper behavior was explained a few minutes back, that you know uh, Priyanka mentioned people are more browsing than searching because and one of our uh, when we co connect with our customers or people who like platforms which sell our stuff uh, we realize and they shared with us that their shoppers are afraid of searching and in their uh, shopper connects or in their uh, interaction with their shopper so because they feel that they are not tech geeks uh, so they don't know how to search right and uh, that is the one issue I think uh, which comes up and the second one is that even if they search so for example all of us will if they if we want to buy soap we'll search soaps right so interestingly we uh, they shared that uh, people are searching nahane ka sabun right or sabun uh, 
uh, and all our SEO strategies go for a toss, right? That you optimize for soap as a keyword and Nahani ka sabun is nowhere there or sabun is nowhere there, right? So I think uh, inherently uh, changing your content, uh, keeping up to that uh, what shopper is searching, that's one bit of uh, what we keep, uh, we try to do. Uh, last year we did, uh, during the festive season, typically we uh, have content which is vernacular in nature as well to reach out to the shoppers. Uh, and the second thing, I think a uh, lot of uh, platforms are innovating and we partner with them faster. So that's, that's our strategy because uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, we just want to steal and go ahead, right? So a lot of uh, platforms have started group by. I think we should also pilot it, uh, have it as a feature. Uh, you can share a link to your friend and uh, you know buy together, get a value uh, discount. And this also solves for uh, a trust because if my friend is buying, uh, so we we partner with platforms and that's how we uh, you know stay up the curve. Very cool. Group buy especially. Uh, Karan, you have had some very global experiences across e-commerce at leadership positions and now coming back and exploring e-commerce for Bharat. Uh, at Moglix, what kind of innovative strategies are you driving? So, let, I'm going to answer with, I think there are three innovations that Bharat will, Bharat will make e-commerce firms drive. Whether Moglix is the one driving it, Misho ends up the one driving it, we don't know. But there are three major innovations, I think, that are, that are required. So, first, the definition of Bharat customers in so much so as they are different, I'm going to go with Mansi's definition. The primary two characteristics we see are a far more desire for value for money and number two is a far lower trust factor specifically as far as e-commerce transactions are concerned. So with that definition, I think the three major areas of, of uh, innovation that will be coming. In my space, which is, which is the industrials and office space, you're going to see the emergence of a one or more uh, local brands which bridge the gap between your top tier Japanese, Korean, XYZ brands which a lot of local customers don't understand and the local brand that he, is or, he or she is used to which provides far better value for money. But there is no, there are very few national midpoint brands that are providing the value for money without the premium imagery of some of our, of our foreign electronic brands. So I think that's one major area for growth and it'll be across categories. It's not only going to be in ACs or this, it's going to be across categories. The second area that I think the, that Bharat will help us break is this delivery versus payment issue. The, a large part of the transactions done in Bharat are actually cash on delivery. Cash on delivery, however, is not an outcome of money liquidity. There is no shortage of liquidity with the individual. What it is actually a driver of, what it is a marker of, is a low trust on the delivery and therefore it gives me the right to have an automatic return option whether or not the company allows me for it. So what you've seen in the last 12 to 18 months is a further tightening of return policies across the board, across the firms. Cash on, cash on delivery essentially allows me to look at the product and return it without having to get entangled with the company. So. And there are reasons that you, it takes longer to deliver to Bharat. Sometimes when the product goes there, the packaging is damaged. Then you get stuck. Is it the LSP's issue? Is it the customer who's the issue? Is it the supplier himself who's done it? So there are a lot of reasons that both from a company side and a customer side, this is prevalent. So we need to fix this or Bharat will force us to fix this either by improving delivery to within the one, two days that you can achieve in bigger cities so that you eliminate a lot of this, or some part payment options, or some uh, credit options, but something or the other will have to break the COD and delivery issue, otherwise 30-40% returns are an unsustainable way for e-commerce to grow. And the last and not the least, I think what Bharat will make us do is local communication. Whether it's based on your local language, whether it's from an influencer who lives in your area, so to bridge the trust gap between these companies that sit in Bombay and Delhi and speak in English, but I need to trust them and buy from them instead of my local Kirana, I need to have somebody I already trust make that gap for me. So those, according to me, are the three major areas of innovations that Bharat will drive for e-commerce firms. Great. Thanks, Karan. Um, Sugosh, would love your perspective on this. What is Aditya Birla Grassin driving? Yeah, so I think when we, uh, so I think most of the points that you said are pretty much on track, right? I think the return spot is a big problem. So when we launched our brand Navyasa 14 months back, uh, our thought process was to try and get maximum business to the marketplace. 
but it really stuck very badly when he saw 50 person getting back. So that's when he decided to go bring in some kind of innovations on the website. So the website became the more critical part for us. And being a person managing the digital part of the entire uh, online transactions, I had to keep building innovations in how I'm talking to the consumer on a regular basis. So one biggest con uh, innovation which we have tried to do or try to imbibe is to build a very strong customer data platform through strong partners, which basically helps me get anyone who comes on a website who's even in a phase of exploring or understanding what the brand is, might not buy it the very first time. He's seen an ID, he's come to a website, right? I get his contact details through an email form, through a sign-up form. He becomes my first point of contact. As he goes further into the website, through different PDPs, he explores different blogs, in the different journey in buying the product, correct? I'm able to target him with differential communication accordingly. Uh, so a, a very simple case in point, when we actually launched this, we thought that Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, the metros would be the biggest business for us. When we actually saw people buying premium saris from the tier two cities as well. I mean, those volumes from, say, a Kanpur or a Lucknow or a Surat, those kind of cities were, were breaking Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore for me. So that is a very important communication for us to how we can even, the, the conversations are happening, my communication became more local. So in my, if I'm targeting people in Surat, targeting people in Andhra, my communication became more regional. Second thing, even when people coming in, uh, what we're also trying to do is through a chatbot, we're going to create a chatbot in multiple languages, we're trying to do that which will help us talk to them in different languages because that brings personalization. So if someone is coming in, chatting in his own mother tongue, that has a stronger feel because these consumers who come to an apparel website like mine, they have a lot of knowledge about the product. They are not there for the, the, the discounts or the margins. They are okay for the premiumness because they have a strong understanding of the product. For them, the quality is the most important part and how I can caress the consumer on a regular basis through conversations, through communications, through a personalized means of ch channel of communication is what the biggest innovation that we're trying to do right now. Okay, great. I think very interesting thing when you talk about the approach that the first visit on the website may not lead to a transaction is a very uh, innovative way of looking at it and then setting expectations accordingly. I would love to get Priyanka's thoughts uh, in terms of innovative strategies that Coolgate Pamulev is driving. So there are only three drivers for us. So one is uh, like I said, for us the opportunity is, we are a widely distributed brand, right? Nine out of ten Indians anyways buy a Colgate product. For us the opportunity is to provide the best oral care and provide really superior value-based benefits to people and that's really how we want to sort of leverage online because there is an opportunity f to show people, educate people online and then drive conversions. So the focus is more value benefits and premiumization while we have the entire portfolio available to everyone. The second, uh, I mean, the second strategy is we're relying on customers, right, to give us that width of distribution. We, I think our machinery is ready to sort of, you know, reach as widely and deeper as possible. We need the support of customers and as customers are sort of, you know, supplying to more pin codes, we, we are going to lap onto that. What I do see as something that we will have to solve for is, when you go really deep down into rural and small towns, we may have to look at, you know, what is our supply chain model for, you know, um, faster, uh, you know, supply of products uh, to the customers as this thing evolves. And the last but not the least is really this voice and vernacular piece. Um, I mean, we know voice searches are increasing at the highest pace. Uh, vernacular is about 30% of searches actually in local languages. But the platforms are still, you know, not fully geared to be able to deploy that, you know, for consumers. So in order to sort of, you know, resolve issues of trust, educate them about the, about the products and all of that. These things are really important for us to solve and be available from a customer and a platform point of view. And for us to actually be ready to, you know, uh, have all the content and the models and, you know, the agility and automation that is needed because, you know, once it all opens up, the scale of content creation is going to be like, you know, of a different kind. Great. Manzi, would you like to add something to this? So I think most, most of the points of what is potentially the uh, capability of platforms today have already been captured. I think uh, a couple of things, of course, uh, which I foresee as a clear opportunity today, vernacular on platforms, and I'm talking mainly grocery specific. Uh, of course, other platforms, such as standalone platforms, have way more evolved. Today, vernacular is not multi-languages and only restricted to a couple of languages, mainly Hindi. How do we expand? Because India is multiple Indias together. So how do we really leverage personalization of content to speak to the consumer in the language that he wants to do is an innovation that we really need for this industry to unlock. 
One important thing also for us is while we keep saying this consumer has affordability as a challenge, I think a big unlock for organizations like us who've traditionally been dependent on mass distribution is how do I reach out with my premium portfolio to this part of the market uh, without having the risks of uh, bad goods on mass distribution in such markets. And we've actually seen, we have a coffee machine called Nescafe E uh, that gets sold for 8,000 bucks. About 80% of the business does not come from metros today. And that is where balancing of what I perceive as value versus price discounts, lower price point, I think we are still far away from reaching out to deep penetrated rural markets. I think it's more about unlocking the next aspirational consumer sitting in these uh, markets. And that unlock with this personalization of content is going to be important. And I think the third important unlock from an innovation perspective needed for, to, for, to drive trust is uh, what, say, a Nika did with beauty, right? The big inhibition that a consumer has had was, I don't know how will this product look at, at me when it comes to try on. And many, many players have done it. Nika is just one example. The big concern on trust for this market is, I can't touch feel the product today. So how can e-commerce unlock that for them to have trust to actually place an order is an important innovation which is now needed to, uh, to be unlocked in e-commerce. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, you know, they say that the best strategies only come if you're listening to your customers. Uh, and some of the ideas that you shared possibly came from that. I would love to get Karan's perspective. Karan, has there been some customer feedback or where Moglix has you know, actively heard what the customers want and derived uh, something out of it? would love your perspective on that. Um, again, this should not be uh, sort of particularly in, uh, different or, or unexpected, but I think one of the things we learned while dealing with, again, the Bharat customer is an overemphasis on communication. So again, specifically to the e-commerce play, how do I get most of my knowledge? I get most of my knowledge through the page, right? And if you're in the e-commerce space, you know, you create better PDPs, you create better imagery and all of this. So from a very structured perspective, you've actually handled the communication aspect of the product by displaying all of that. Whether it's a lack of sophistication, whether it's a lack of, whether these are initial, initial purchases, my rural customer is not actually looking at my PDP pages and picking up all the information that I've said there. So even if I've written in very large uh, font, if I may, that these XYZ products are non-returnable, right? Because it's a one-time use gardening product. You can't return this product. The customer will try to return it. And, and after being walked through the policy and the PDP page that, sir or oh, ma'am, you can't return this, as you can see, they're genuinely offended, they will escalate to CEO, escalate to consumer forum, escalate via the legal channels and so on and so forth. So, and they are genuinely confused about the fact that they could not return the product and it does not click to them that, yeah, it's written on the website. So, I'm, I'm just trying to draw out a very specific example to make use case of this. So, what we have learned is one of the specific things that we can do for our rural customers is over-communicate. And to the only extent that we're limiting this is by cost, because obviously every time I send a WhatsApp or a text message, there's a cost, but your shipment is leaving, your shipment is on the way, you can in fact return the shipment. Is your address correct? Somebody was speaking to geography. So even though we have the official address, we send them the address behind. Is this correct? Behind this temple, left of this, do that. So, and I can keep giving examples of this, but the point is, the core thing that we have learned and we have incorporated into our process is an increased velocity of communication with my consumer and informing him or her of every single step that I am doing and not be surprised, not being surprised if that communication is still not um, getting through. Okay, great. Speaking about velocity, you know, as a, you know, startup which has disrupted the space in Misho, have you, you know, taken customer feedback actively to really evolve from time to time? Yeah, so for us, one of the nine mantras that every single individual in the company lives by is user first. Like every decision that we're making has to kind of like start with the user perspective. And one of the rituals we've built out in the company is what we call LOD, listen or die rituals. This is literally everyone getting out of the building and spending time with the customers. Be that an end user, be that a seller. Like this includes our entire leadership team that goes and travels through different cities and spends time. And like this has actually, and like every feature product that we launch, right, I think we end up running through a bunch of iterations where all of these are fueled by the converse, of course, the data that we're seeing from how people are, our audience is engaging on the 
website itself or the app itself but also from all of these in person or on the phone on the video conversation so like examples i'll give you uh, one of the way misho monetizes is by essentially an ads product on the platform uh, we've gone out spent time with the sellers who advertise on misho and early on kind of like again these are typically mid to small businesses uh, folks that are running a single person to a 10 person or 15 person a company that's selling products this is the first time they've encountered an advertising platform and the thing that we learned with them is right we started reporting views clicks and all of that and they like none of this matters humko batao order kitna aaya ise so like we pivoted around to like very strongly focusing on what is the roi of your ad spend and being very very upfront about that and also across the entire advertising platform right i think how can we make it simple i think we have to solve for of course there is going to be the top sellers that are much larger ones but I, our significant population is these mid and small businesses how do we solve for the platform uh, helping with them with their needs in a way they can actually engage with it so this is a thing that shows up across like every aspect of uh, what you do at me show okay thanks you know uh, they say that 20% of all the commerce business uh in the country happens in just one single month which is october uh with the festive season coming up uh manchi are there any things planned up which you would like to share a lot of it is i think a wait and watch for october but uh of course as you said festive and considering we are in the food business uh the entire objective is having typical fit for purpose pro- products uh specifically keeping the the month of uh, dashera diwali and other festivals in mind so you will see clear innovations in terms of pack types in terms of new products which will be targeting uh, the impulse buying behavior and a social gathering behavior of a consumer coming in for sure great uh, tejas anything planned up which you like to share uh, so for unilever uh, uh, like half of our uh, winter portfolio uh, the vaselines and the ponds uh, happens in winter and for us all of us we have slide decks labeled winter is coming and we are planning very heavily for that so festival is all about win- winter for us because it's kick starts a big winter six month season i think uh, that's one aspect of it but broad principles uh, we partner with platforms uh, where like there are two types of platforms we broadly classify one who are an on who are on an acquisition spree who have money to burn so there we partner for acquisition of new consumers so we play hard on our core portfolio which basically we we are strong at uh, and there are certain platforms which are consolidating or focusing on profitability there we try to upsell our uh, premium portfolio or regimes or kits and combos so that uh, our loyal shoppers are rewarded with a bigger chunk of business so that's great uh, you know let's also learn about what have been the biggest wins um, and some of the biggest uh, learnings right because you never fail you learn or you succeed from some of these brands i love sugosh's perspective uh, on some of the successes that you have had so i think when we launched navyasa 15 months back so i think we had a celebrity plan in place uh, which is going to give a massive push to the brand in the market right but then post that uh, we were looking at different ways of how we could use influencers to really ramp up the conversations and the discussion around the brand so because the most important piece because we are in the business of inspiration i mean uh, sarees and apparels for women is an inspiring product uh, it's i mean the costing is secondary but inspiration is what we provide so i mean though we had influencers in mind we wanted to go a, a step further and actually get people who knew about uh, apparels or sarees as a brand who are actually advocating that more like a key opinion leader because they actually know your product more than what you know about the product they can tell you more information they can talk more openly to the consumers so we actually tied up with couple of such key opinion leaders uh, at a slightly premium cost but what it helped us drive massive dms on our social handles because people started asking for the sari that person is wearing person abc i don't want to take names of influencers here but a person abc is wearing and what is the kind of make what is the kind of fabric it has so those kind of uh, queries that started coming in a dm handle we started getting like almost 30 40 dms on a daily basis whenever we used to have any kind of intervention through these key opinion leaders so for us that was a very massive win because uh, we had done a lot of influencer marketing in the past more like a one off this was more as an opportunity which threw us in the face 
seeing that we can actually build a long term campaign or a long term thought process with these guys and have monthly interventions which should keep our engaged, uh, keep our consumers engaged and hooked. So that was, I think, one of the biggest wins that we encountered in our stint so far. Great, thanks. Uh, Divesh, any wins or learnings that you would like to share? Uh, I'll start with wins and come to learnings. Uh, I think for Misho, our like, actual our mission at the company is to democratize internet commerce for Bharat. Uh, very apt given this conversation, but uh, I think the biggest successes for us truly, like it's not one or two pivotal moments, right? It's every time we're actually able to deliver delight to an end user where they now have access to choices to products that they didn't have earlier. I think that is one big cornerstone of like what we consider our success. On the seller side, right, I think this is where like we, we often kind of like bring some of our sellers to conversations with the company as well and like hearing some of those where I think people who've gone off on an uncharted path, like never had a business background in the family or in the uh, neighborhood, in the community and gone and tried out this e-commerce thing with Misho and the success they've had, like I think minting essentially Latpatis, Kuroorpatis that are these small SMB sellers, right? I think that is the success. That is like I think the impact we are having on Bharat is what I think is our success and uh, we are fortunate enough to kind of like get to see a lot of these every day. Great. Mansi, anything you'd like to share? So I think uh, I'll, I'll call this a clear learning when we, uh, because about 85% of our business used to come from uh, the general trade market. Uh, when we tried to replicate the same by geography on e-commerce, uh, we thought, okay, we, it's the easiest thing to do. Whatever uh, SKU mix that goes in general trade, let's just replicate that online. But what happens with that is, especially with players like us, uh, whether it's marketplace, wh whether it's a particular sub-channel, there is a shopper mission, there is a customer mission to drive average order value. If players like us will try to play on a specific SKU size, it will never be a profitable ma uh, model for us, it will never be a profitable model for, the, for our platform and hence will not be a sustainable model for the consumer. As a result of which what we started doing was we started designing specific products got away from that mindset of premium versus non-premium because this is the only place, unlike a general trade, where, we, where you can right there communicate with the consumer and you have the maximum chances to drive conversion because you're speaking, he's making a decision at that time and that's what you're impacting. And that is where our premium portfolio mix today is almost 50% from non-metros coming in when it comes to e-commerce. And that's the way we tried to play and got away with that entire fact of small packs, five bucks, 10 bucks, etc. Yes, we played on those packs, but we played on multi-packs, we played on combos to be able to drive the average order value as well as perceived value for the consumer as well. Okay, great. Tejas, would you like to share some of your learnings? Um, I think uh, uh, one of the biggest learnings uh, uh, came uh, when we realized that a tier two town, uh, the l largest selling coffee was Davidoff and not Brew and Nescafe. But uh, that, that's basically saying that you don't perceive consumers in a certain way that this town or this person will order this. So always be up for surprises, learn from data. I think that's something which uh, we have inculcated and uh, would uh, ask anyone to do it as well. Okay, great. Thank you. We are not leaving our panelists without learning from them what their secret sources or what their one line mantra for building e-commerce in Bharat is. So Karan, what would be for you? I'm going to give a very boring answer. It's ops. If you're an e-commerce player, you're a retailer, you're not going to get premium no matter what you may have told your investors or otherwise, which means your core to success is going to be operational efficiency, operational focus. So that's the secret to, I think, any e-commerce business, but certainly one targeting um, uh, rural India okay, or great. Bharat. Great. Operations. Mansi, what is for you? Unfortunately, we don't work on the D2C part, so operations not will really, really call out from that perspective. But I think I'll keep it very generic because that's what I believe in. I think it's adapting to the changing dynamism. You keep innovating because this dynamics, what is there today, changes tomorrow. So how do you adapt faster with efficiency with changing dynamism is my mantra. Great. Devesh? 
focus on the user and all else will follow. Uh, I think obsess about your customer and just go learn behaviors, patterns and how you can truly, truly help a problem, solve a problem that exists for them. Great. So two things, one is consumer focus which is giving them tailored products mm -hmm. and the, you know, communicating to them in, in a local relatable way. And the second I think and which is the most important thing is the ability to look at data, get, look at feedback, track that and you know, change and adapt. So that's that constant thing on e-commerce which, which is not available for us in other channels and how do we use that to continuously evolve. Great. Thanks Priyanka. Uh, I think for me is uh, more to do with experiments, keep experimenting, keep failing, keep learning is what I always believe in and uh, I mean that's the best way to go. For. Yeah, just to add to this point, I always said e-commerce is WIP. It always is. So, some months is good, some months is bad. You try to figure out what worked. By the time you figure it out, mm. the, the results are going the other way. So, for me, it's always been WIP. But yes, I think to add to a point, you need to see what a consumer is doing. How much you can converse with the consumer is how sticky he'll, stick, he'll be to your brand. Lovely. Great. So, one sentiment that comes out is to have a growth mindset, to have a startup mindset at heart while building for Bharat. Uh, thank you so much to all the panelists. Uh, I learned so much, I'm sure our audience learned and hopefully all of us learned how to limit failures and maximize chances of success while building e-commerce for Bharat. Uh, and with that, we end this panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.